Uh, we're going to talk a little bit today about another use of trees, which is expression trees. Before I get to expression trees, I got to tell you two really weird stories, stories you're probably not likely to hear outside of a computer science class. I went to RPI to study computer engineering back in the 1980s, so that was about 35 years ago. And when I got there, I hadn't declared my major yet, and I was trying to, one of the decisions I was trying to make was to go, whether to go into computer science or go to computer engineering. And maybe some of you are trying to make that decision now. So I'll tell you my own experience. I was sitting in the restaurant uh, one day and the two kids behind me were having a philosophical argument. And this is basically what I heard. One of them was explaining to the other that he was puzzled why humans had not evolved to have eight or 16 fingers. Because you would think usually the evolutionary branches go in such a way as to create some advantage for the, for the individual. And the fact that we have 10 fingers is really kind of a curse for human civilization because we have eight, 10 fingers, so we have a base 10 numbering system. And that will forever keep us from communicating on the same level as a computer because the computer really understands base two, which is also same as base eight and base 16 to some extent. And so the two students were arguing about why it was that we didn't have 16 fingers and how much more advanced society would likely have turned out to be by this time if we had had 16 fingers. And I'm just listening to this thinking, wow, that's a thought I'd never had before. And I came to the conclusion after listening to these two that I probably didn't have a whole lot in common with those computer science people. And I decided to stay and go into computer engineering, which a little bit more hands-on, less philosophical. Um, now, I, I think that, that the guy was right. We probably would be much further along as a society. How come we don't stop now and just switch over from base 10 to base 16. Why, why don't you think we do that? Yes, sir. Well, it would definitely be nearly impossible for us, but why don't we just say, okay, starting next year in kindergarten, instead of teaching base 10, we're gonna teach base 16. What do you think, sir? Well, a lot of infrastructure on the world relies on base 10. It would just be too disruptive, and it's not practical at this point to go back and change. We're gonna have to kind of live with this. So, no one is suggesting that we suddenly give up our base 10 and go back to base 16, but the world would be a different place if it was base 16. You agree? Okay. Now I'm gonna tell you another story. This one is uh, a similar story, except that there was a group of students, also computer science majors and not computer engineering majors at RPI, who were promoting that we change the way we write and evaluate mathematical equations. Basically, we write equations like this, and they were promoting that we give this up and write it like this instead. Now, you might be looking at this thing thinking, what the heck are they talking about? So I gotta come back here and give you a little story behind this. Um, if we have uh, an expression today the way that you write it right now, right? If we write like this, you can see that there is, on occasion, if I was to write it without parentheses, there can be some ambiguity, for example, as to whether this 4 belongs to this operator or this operator. Now, in... Uh, on Earth today, everybody has sort of agreed on a grammar, a set of rules to try and determine how to get rid of this ambiguity. What, what do we call those rules in mathematics? Mr. Nikita, what do we call them? PEMDAS. It's called PEMDAS. And then even PEMDAS is not really good enough for us because sometimes we need to override those rules. So the first thing in PEMDAS is what? What do we introduce in order to over at parentheses, we need to overwrite that with parentheses. Now, the human civilization has been around about 5,000 years or so, I'm guessing. And I don't know of any civilization that has occurred in, in humanity during that period that has written uh, numbers any other way than this way 
where the operator is in the middle and the operands are on two sides. I strongly suspect that the reason we write it this way is that our human brain really loves symmetry and this represents a symmetric representation of the equation or the expression. Now, you're gonna be surprised to learn this, but this is not a good way to write mathematical expressions. Why? Because of this ambiguity, because we need parentheses, etc. It turns out that there are two much better ways. One way is like this, where we put the operator first and the operands afterwards. This was developed by a mathematician in Poland who had some big, long, complicated last name. So people just started calling it Polish notation. And then later on, another group of scientists came along and said, this is good, but this is even better, where we write the operands first and then the operator. This was known as Polish notation. This is known as reverse Polish notation. Now, you might be asking, why would we bother doing any of this? It turns out that on either of these, if we used them, we wouldn't need PEMDAS anymore and we wouldn't need parentheses anymore because there is no longer any ambiguity about which operator, which operands go with which operators. It's a much easier thing to read and write and it's much easier for the computer to digest and parse the expressions. So therefore, a group of students, and this wasn't just at RPI, but at all the tech universities at the time, this is in the 1980s, they actually suggested that humanity stop teaching math like this and start teaching math like this. They got so far that one of the calculator companies called Hewlett Packard, which I don't even know if they make calculators anymore, made calculators that work like this. So if you wanted to calculate three plus four on a Texas Instruments machine, you would type three plus four equals. And on a Hewlett Packard machine, you would type three enter, four enter, minus. And these folks were suggesting that we should, as, as, a, as a species, move over from this to this. And it became kind of a religious war, a war that I think that they lost. I don't know if there's still people on campuses pushing for this. I suspect not. But just wanted you to know that this actually happened during the 1980s. So it turns out that these terms are now considered to be slightly racist, so we don't use these terms anymore. And instead, we use these terms this, anybody know what this is called? It's called infix notation. Can anyone guess what this one is called? Yes, sir. Prefix? This is called prefix notation. And can anyone guess what this one is called? Yes, miss? Postfix. It's called postfix notation. And in computer science, we are often asked to translate from here to one of these, to go from a human readable form to computer readable form. And we're gonna spend a little time on that today. Yes, sir. Is that how assemblies phrase? Like the uh, and then the so it's not so, so much assembly, sir, but the computer works with a stack. And so these things are much more stack friendly than this. And I'm gonna show you why today.